The following program is brought to you by Pizzop Productions. And there it is. Boom! We are back on the air. It is the Totally Necessary Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Kevin Porter, and we are here to cover the week that was professional wrestling. Now, guys, now, guys, uh, we got a show for you. We're going to be talking about Monday Night Raw. We're going to be talking about Tuesday Night SmackDown Live, whatever. NXT, shout out to Io Shirai, Shayna Baszler. Oh, match of the week right there. I'm just going to call it right there. If you did not watch the main event of NXT this last week, that cage match between Io Shirai, Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship, boom, best thing on WWE this week. Well, at, yeah, at least on the TV side of it. You know, there was maybe some better stuff at the pay-per-view. That Cruiserweight match, right? Like, that Cruiserweight match was pretty fucking good stomping ground, dude. But I really enjoy that cage match. And again, guys, we're here to cover the week that was. Now, this coming Saturday, we have AEW's second ever event, Fighter Fest. So at the end of the show, we'll be going through that as well. And if you're just interested in my take on AEW, I suggest... You stick around because, hey, maybe maybe we have something good to say about WWE this week. Okay, guys? I don't just react because I hate WWE. W, I was thinking about that this week, dude. It's like back in the day when there was WCW and WWEF. Like, where did I stand, dude? I always stood with the WWF, dude. And I want to still stand with the WWF now, dude. I want to stand with WWE, dude. I want I, That's my home promotion, dude. I grew up on it. I don't want to be like all, you know, oh, fuck WWE, but... I mean, you got to acknowledge the fact that, you know, we have Baron Corbin main eventing a fucking a WWE pay-per-view. It's just like, do they really think this is, like, good? You know, like, people are like, like, oh, no, we, we like, we appreciate Baron Corbin the heel, and we're booing him because we appreciate him doing his job. No, no, no. We, 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 it's the opposite. It's just like, hey, that's Baron Corbin. Fuck this. AEW, motherfuckers. CM Punk, motherfuckers. Daniel Bryan, motherfuckers. I mean, if you're not, I, I understand that you're a large fucking corporation. And maybe that's the problem, man. I grew up on WWE when it was just a mom and pa company. Now it's like this giant fucking Disneyland fucking billionaire company. And this is like, fuck you, consumer, just like every other fucking corporation out there. Just like, what? Fucking bullshit, dude. I don't know. But AEW Fighter Fest is coming up this coming Saturday. Um, so, yeah, again, we will be running through that card. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good time, guys. So let's just go ahead and kick off this motherfucking week. We had the uh, the follow-up to the end of Sunday's um, you know main event with uh, Becky Lynch crashing the main, the, you know, the the special guest referee beating the shit out of Lacey Evans and her and Seth Rollins, you know, they're 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 on on screen, you know, love love interest, you know, whatever, dude. I don't, I don't know. I want to like it. I want to like it. You know, it's like I liked I like mixed tag shit. Like I I don't hate that. Um, so I guess you know, it's just I don't know, man. It's just there's something about Baron Corbin, dude, where it's just like really. I mean, is it really that bad? I don't know. Maybe we're just like, maybe we're just like being too much fucking assholes for about this shit. You know, maybe we just need to calm down. But like, maybe you should bear Corman and give him a chance. Just give fucking Baron Corman a chance. It's like I don't really give a fuck though. Uh, Lacey Evans, you know, I, you know me, dude. I fucking like Lacey Evans. And uh, again, though, I don't know. Everybody, everybody was you know giving that match a little bit more love than I did, but I thought it was pretty fucking basic, dude. I heard a lot of people talk about how Alexa Bliss and. Bailey wasn't the good ma- women's match on Sunday. And I was like, man, I thought that was a way better fucking women's match, dude. I thought they fucking brought it hard, dude. I liked it. I fucking liked it. So fucking sue me. I don't give a shit, dude. I don't give a fuck what you fucking think, motherfuckers. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I, 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 I strive to stay along the lines and keep my sanity right here. Um, I like. I kind of liked how on, uh, you know, I don't know. It was kind of awkward how Seth Rollins tried to break up. You know, because then, you know, okay, so, yeah, Seth Rollins comes out. Becky Lynch interrupts him. They're like, oh, I thought you, you interrupted me. Oh, I interrupted you. It's just like, ah. ah. 
I don't know. It's like I said, I want to like it. But, you know, sitting here mulling through to my head and shit, it's like, did I really enjoy Monday night? Did I really enjoy watching Raw? I mean, like, albeit it's from my home state, you know, it's like, man, I'm really glad I didn't, you know, spend the money to go to Everett. Because <laughs> they kept saying Washington State, they wanted, they're they they're too embarrassed because they're in fucking Everett, dude. It's like, fuck Everett, dude. It's like, you know, whatever, man. Um, Nonetheless... <laughs> Baron Corbin, uh, Lacey Evans come out. Uh, but Seth, dude, I'm fucking high as shit, dude. I've done this like intro like 20 fucking times. It feels like, and I'm just like, whatever, dude. Whatever I say this time, I don't even care. Like, I just need to. We just need to record something. We need to record my voice going into a microphone. And if it's an enjoyable episode, then hey, thank you for enjoying it. But if it's not, well, shit, we're just gonna go down with the shit this week. So, uh, but yeah, okay. So the whole point was I'm trying to get to is that when Seth Rollins. Um, when Seth Rollins is like, like, oh, what am I supposed to do between Becky Lynch and Lacey Evans? He tries to break it up awkwardly and she pushes him. It's just like, let him fucking fight. What the fuck, dude? I don't know, dude. Seth Rollins like really pissed off a lot of people this week, you know, and I, you know, good for him for like defending his company and shit. But like, I saw Kenny Omega's tweet because they announced, uh, their, their, uh, fight for the fallen show. That's taking place a couple weeks in a couple weeks. Apparently WWE is going to stream the evolve 10th, 10 year anniversary show on the network. And it's the same fucking night as uh, the fight for the fallen. The fight for the fallen is supposed to be for a charity and stuff. And so, like, dude, Kenny Omega is just like motherfucker. You, you, you know, because you, apparently, yeah, fucking Seth Rollins is all you know, like shoving Will Ospreay's face about how he makes more fucking money, you know, you know than him working in WWE. And it's just like, dude, <laughs> well, you know, whatever, dude. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and criticize him for that. But it was just Kenny Omega came back, you know, with a pretty fucking. He deleted the tweet, but. It was just today. It was, you know, dating this, you know, when I recorded this, obviously. But, uh, you know, just talking about how Seth Rollins lines his fucking money with fucking, you know, uh, you know, fucking blood money and shit from Saudi Arabia and stuff. And it's just like, man, it's, 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 you know, they say it's not a war, dude. But I don't know, dude. I don't know. It kind of feels like it's, 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 it's you know, fi- shots are being fired, dude. I mean, you know, shots are definitely being fired. Uh, so this sets up our our Extreme Rules main event, I suppose, which will be a uh, winner-take-all uh, women's universal championship, both on the line, Baron Corbin, Lacey Evans versus Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. So I we'll see we'll see what happens, man. We got, what, like another two weeks before fucking that show? So I don't know. They're, they're fucking – there's so many damn shows, dude. There's so many stupid fucking shows. So we saw the revival, Daniel Bryan, Rowan versus the Usos in the New Day. In an elimination match. Dude, okay, so yeah, what the fuck is up with those two out of three falls eliminations bullshit? Apparently, WD has, has passed some sort of creed that they uh, don't, won't show, act, you know, won't have wrestling. You know what? Well, they won't break during the middle of the fucking match. So in order to get around all the fucking commercial breaks they, ha- they fucking have, uh, they have to uh, apparently, you know, put resets in there. So it's like two out of three falls matches or elimination matches. So, okay, you get a pinfall, boom, we're going to commercial, and then they reset, and then the match starts again. It's just, it was like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know, because like, they started this, like, what, like two, three weeks ago now at this point? Like, two weeks ago? And uh, at first I was like, why are they doing that two nights in a row? And it's like, why? You know, two out of three falls, who gives a shit? It's just like, they had two, two out of three falls matches on fucking SmackDown this week. It's like, how do you, it's like, what, what, what are we doing? Am I playing fucking WWE 2K19? It's like, where I just choose specialty matches for a random fucking Monday Night Raw? Like, a two out of three falls match used to mean something, right? You know, it used to fucking mean something. I don't know. Apparently not anymore, dude. Apparently fucking not. So, uh, ultimately, the Usos and New Day defeated uh, Revival and Brian and Rowan. I liked how the beginning with the Revival and Daniel Bryan, because Daniel Bryan's de facto face, you know, obviously, in Washington. He got jobbed out pretty fucking quick. Uh, basically, it's just to set up the tag team matches moving forward, which, what the fuck is this? So, New Day loses the night before, and then automatically they're in a fucking match against the, you know, it's just like, come on, dude. Like, wins and losses don't fucking matter in WWE, dude. And it's just like, that's why AEW is such a fucking fresh a breath of fresh air, dude. And I know it's like, you know, oh, Kevin, you're always fucking talking about your fucking girlfriend, you know. AEW, it's like, shit, hun, fucking son. <laughs> like, it's good stuff. It's a, you know, it's who's to say AEW is going to succeed, long, you know, long run, but, you know, he's definitely pulling for him, dude. Definitely fucking pulling for him. Um, so yeah, Usos, New Day, eh, whatever, dude. Uh, Miss TV sets up, um, yeah, okay, so they, they, um, yeah, okay, so Drake Maverick and R-Truth come out. 
uh, for the Miz TV. Uh, basically, Truth defeated Maverick to be a pinfall for the 24-7 championship. There's a bunch of fucking title changes. Uh, Truth still has the championship as of now. I mean, it's it's turning it, you know, honestly, I mean, like, for all the, you know, shit talking that happened when Mick Foley dropped this title, you know, when he fucking, you know, unveiled it here like a month ago or whatever, you know, honestly, I, I'm pretty entertained with our truth Like, I think he's funny. I like Drake Maverick. Like, I don't have a problem with the 24-7 championship. Like, that's honestly, like, probably one of the most entertaining things going on Raw or SmackDown. And I know it's only, like, one segment, typically. And that's all it needs to be, you know. Um, Yeah, man, well, we saw a bunch of title changes, and, you know, our truths like, a nine-time 24-7 champion now. So, I mean, I think that's pretty cool, dude. I mean, you know, hey. You don't, I don't know, it's it's a change of pace, dude. It's definitely a change of pace, and, you know, it's a change of pace. So we saw Roman Reigns take on Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre. So ultimately, this was just a beatdown. Reigns, um, it ended up in no contest as we saw the return of The Undertaker. Fucking, rocking the fucking skull it, dude. Fucking damn, dude. I mean, he looks good, though. I mean, even for, like, you know, the receding hairline and everything, I mean, like, I think he's still looking fucking good, dude. And he looked fucking good in these spurts here, man. He's like, you know, it's if we put him in short spurts, right? Like, you know, don't have him going out there doing a 20-minute match. You can go out there and do a five-minute match, you know? Five, six, seven, eight, ten? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe, like, three three to five minutes. Let's keep it down to three to five minutes, guys. Uh, but it's going to be The Undertaker teaming up with Roman Reigns take on Drew McIntyre and Shane McMahon, which this obviously this feud needed a shot in the fucking arm if they were going to continue it for at least for one more pay-per-view. Um, I heard the suggestion that it would be The Miz. Dude, if it would have been The Miz, I would have been completely let down. But honestly, like I'm kind of I'm looking forward to this, dude. I'm looking forward to seeing The Undertaker team up with Roman Reigns um, at Extreme Rules. Uh, Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lashley and Tug of War. So they're continuing this feud. Uh, I think Braun Strowman ultimately got yeah defeated Lashley by pulling him across the line. Um, yeah, I mean it's something for him to do, right? I mean I don't really care one way or the other. I don't. It's not that I hate either one of them. I just, eh, it's just like I don't really care though. You know, I just don't care about Bobby Lashley, and I really don't care about Braun Strowman anymore. So it's like, you know, uh, what's what's next, dude? What's next, guys? Uh, we had the Viking Raiders take on Luke Gallus and Carl Anderson. So earlier in the evening, we saw AJ Styles because, um, you know, stop. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, the Noe Jose uh, conga line. And I like the pairing, man. I mean, both these guys were wrestling for New Japan Pro Wrestling not too long ago, you know, in the last like five years and uh, three, you know, three years or whatever. And uh, so, like, I like the Viking Raiders and I like Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. I don't know if Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson are going to be in WWE past their contracts, you know, this coming fall, you know, but at the same time, like, you know, I like seeing him on TV. So, I mean, you know, even if it is a losing streak, I'm just going to see the positive in this one. And I'm just going to say it was, uh, you know, it was good to see him on Monday night and good to see the Viking Raiders uh, pick up a win there. Uh, R-Truth, yeah, okay. So, R-Truth escapes uh, his eight-time 24-7 tribute. Okay, so maybe that happened later in the evening. Okay, so I guess it did. I don't fucking, dude. I, like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, sometimes I get really way too high for Raw. And, I, you know, it's dude, I record this like two days later. It's not that much longer. I should remember this, but dude, it's three hour show. Like fuck, dude, way too much WWE. <laughs> go fuck yourself and your consumerism. You bullshit fucking. Oh, go sell, we go sell fucking ads, man. We go sell ads to make money, dude. Fuck, how, how are we gonna pay for our fucking cars, man? How are we gonna pay for our cars? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So it was uh, AJ or uh, Heath Slater and Mojo Rawley and were in the ring. Um, yeah, so okay, so Slater defeated Truth. Truth defeated Slater. Alexander uh, defeated Truth. EC3 defeated Alexander. Truth defeated EC3 to become the new 24/7 champion. So okay, so ultimately that's what how it went down. But again, dude, I'm dude. I mean, Mojo Raleigh just signed a new five year contract. Fucking Jinder Mahal just signed a new five year contract. Which, dude, I don't fucking blame him. You know, it's like here I talk shit about them being consumerism and you know all that shit. But it's just like you gotta get you gotta get your money where you gotta get it, man. So I'm not gonna shit all over that. Um, you fucking hypocrite, Kevin Porter. You're such a fucking hypocrite. Shut the fuck up. Who the fuck's who the fuck's actually listening to you? Huh? Who wants to hear it from you, man? You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Shut the fuck up, motherfuckers. I'm drinking Prairie Air, Prairie A, carbonate, carbonated mineral water. It's fucking delicious, dude. Fuck, we got like this Italian Kirkland Italian um kind and it it's it's not good it doesn't taste good it doesn't taste good i don't like the italian kind i like 
it's like regular prairie air or um yeah i don't know we that should be the official sponsor of our fucking in the mouth of madness podcast dude um <clears throat> we're recording this weekend and and dustin's probably gonna bring over a fucking case of uh, mineral water dude and it's gonna be fucking delicious because i love mineral water uh kofi kingston took on Sami Zayn, and then kofi kingston took on kevin owens uh great to see both my favorite dudes getting fucking jobbed out the night after you know a win but you know you would think oh they're gonna push him no they're not okay i guess they're not going to but hey they're getting paid a lot of money to not get pushed so who 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 ultimately wins in the end guys who ultimately wins at the end um after these uh matches we saw Samoa Joe attack Kofi Kingston um thus setting up a world title match at Extreme Rules Kofi Kingston defending against uh Sammy or Samoa Joe motherfucker so I'm I'm fucking thoroughly looking forward to that Alexa Bliss took on Naomi, uh, Bliss and Naomi, then Bliss and Nikki and Cross, Bliss and, and Nikki Cross versus Natalia and Naomi, so it turned into a tag match. Um, uh, I guess they're continuing down this line, you know, with Alexa Bliss and, and Nikki Cross, so it's just a continuation of that storyline, so I got nothing bad to say about that. Um, I, I've ultimately enjoyed, I think that's why I enjoyed the Bailey uh, alexa Bliss match at uh, Stomping Ground this past Sunday. It was a good shit, it was good shit, man. Um, Ricochet took on AJ Styles in the main event of Monday night. This was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to say the positive before they say the negative. I'm really happy that they put Ricochet in the main event. I'm really happy that Ricochet won the United States championship. I see Ricochet as like a back in 2010 when Daniel Bryan won the United States championship. I could see him going down that line to say, Hey, two, three years down the road, this guy could be headlining a WrestleMania, dude. Give him, give him the opportunity to shine and keep producing, you know, you know, working on his interview and everything. I mean, when Daniel Bryan first got to WWE, was his interview, like, was his, uh, you know, promo skills the best? No, they weren't. Over time, though, they developed into probably one of the fucking best in the industry. So I have full faith in Ricochet as a performer that he can... Um, gain that status years down the road dude but with that being said do i like seeing ricochet jobbed out the night after he wins the united states championship albeit aj styles you know i mean i get it it's aj styles but like yeah i don't know i I just i don't like that oh you got to beat the champion to be to 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 to, you know get the title shot because now we're gonna see the title shot and then that's where ricochet gets his win back right it's like, why do we have to trade wins and losses? Like, why can't AJ Styles beat this guy and this guy and this guy? Oh, then he's going to challenge Ricochet for the first time for the United States Championship. And if you want, like, you you let them go and have that 20, 25 fucking minute match and just beat the shit out of each other and then let Ricochet actually, like, you know, Ricochet get the win just barely over AJ Styles. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but no, like AJ Styles just comes out, you know, they have a good match. I mean, I'm not shitting on the match or anything, but like, you know, Styles beats Ricochet and we saw the whole, you know, Styles fucking, you know, sending Luke Gallows and, and Carl Anderson to the back, which I think ultimately may lead to him, you know, turning heel, you know, I think that's kind of what more or less that's leading towards, but nonetheless, at this point here, it is, you know, it's setting up extreme rules. And I guess, you know, again, Kevin, Kevin Porter, what the fuck do you know? Are you in these bookers, you know, these writers meetings? Are you, are you booking the show, Kevin Porter? Fuck no. You, do you have a million dollars? Fuck no. You know, so <sighs> these times you just kind of tell you, ask yourself, just like, damn dude, Kevin Porter, it's just professional wrestling. It's just fucking professional wrestling. So we kick on over to SmackDown this past week. We saw Kofi Kingston, uh, kicking off SmackDown. We all saw ultimately, um, fucking Dolph Ziggler come out. It's like, ah, fucking, and when he, his music fucking played, I just let out a ground. I was like, no, I'm done with Dolph Ziggler. Go do stand up comedy, bro. Go do stand up comedy. Like, that's a dream of yours. Go achieve that dream then. It's not, you know, fuck, man. I just didn't want to fucking see it. And, like, honestly, I didn't watch fucking SmackDown because of that, dude. It just kind of soured the taste of my mouth, dude. I was just like, I don't even want to bother, dude. I don't even fucking want to bother. Uh, so we saw Xavier Woods and Big E versus... Oh, yeah, okay. So they set up the fucking main event, Dolph Ziggler versus fucking Kofi Kingston. If if Dolph wins, he gets into the... You know, makes it a triple threat at Extreme Rules. 
I mean, that's really what I want to see, right? A triple threat with Samoa Joe and Dolph Ziggler and Kofi Kingston. I want to see Kofi Kingston versus Samoa Joe in a one-on-one match. I don't need to see some bullshit fucking triple threat with Dolph Ziggler. So again, Xavier Woods and Big E took on Daniel Bryan and Rowan. Um, Boom, 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 boom. New Day wins. So again... Your tag team champions are jobbed out. Great, dude. Fucking congratulations for continuously booking the same fucking show for the past 20 fucking years, WWE. Uh, ultimately, this turned into New Day and Heavy Machinery versus Brian and Rowan uh, and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, Heavy Machinery and New Day won um, and defeated Owen and Zayn, Brian and Rowan. I think uh, Sami Zayn's the one that... Um, Oh, shit, yeah, I guess uh, it said the action broke down late, though, though, and Heavy Machinery was able to throw it, throw its name into a tag team title confrontation contention by flattening Zayn with the compactor after Owens left his partner to fend for himself. Huh. So I guess I, get, I guess I missed that. So um, apparently they're teasing the... I mean, at this point, I mean, like, why not? Like, as much... I want to see them fucking win the tag team championships, dude. Like, I don't want to fucking see them jobbed out, dude. Fuck you, WWE. Fuck you, motherfuckers. Best two out of three falls match. First one of the night, The Miz versus Elias. Do I give a shit? Not fucking really. The Miz and Elias? I don't give a fuck. I don't... I. It's just setting up fucking Shane McMahon. I mean, Shane McMahon comes down, fucking takes out fucking The Miz. Elias wins. Like, I don't know. Maybe in the appropriate mood, I don't mind it. But it's just right now, it's just like... Ah. We've been seeing the same shit for like three fucking months, four fucking, they've been doing the Miz and fucking Shane McMahon storyline since what, November? Fucking November? I know, Kim Porter, just, uh, you know, long-term booking isn't, you know, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not long-term booking. They're just continuing it week to week. And they're just like, oh, we'll just stretch it and stretch it and stretch it and stretch it. I don't know, man. I don't fucking know, guys. <sighs> Shane, Shane, you know, Miz isn't being used for shit, dude. So he's just, a, he's a jobber to the main event. I mean, he's the last main eventer I know. I guess Shane McMahon is. I don't know. Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? Bailey took on Nikki Cross. Ooh, exciting. Cross defeated Bailey. So again, jobbing out your fucking champion. Come on. Nikki Cross defeats Bailey. So I think this gets Alexa Bliss another title shot. Fuck me, dude. Ember Moon versus Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville is hot. Ember Moon is hot. Deville defeats Moon. Um, I, I, I've, I've enjoyed the past couple weeks seeing the backstage, you know, segments with them. So glad to see them get a match on TV. Deville defeats Moon. Uh, they will trade wins for the next three weeks, guys. I know in your main event of the night, uh, best two out of three falls match: Kofi Kingston versus fucking Dolph Ziggler. Oh, uh, really? Well, I I guess it was from what I heard, it's a better match than what they had on Sunday. So this ultimately does go to the third fall. Uh, Kofi Kingston wins Ziggler, so they're giving it an A, dude. So at least like that seems like at least it was a good match. Um, again, I didn't watch SmackDown, so I'm not, I can't really comment on the work rate. Which typically, I mean, these two guys like can give a good match and stuff. So it's just we've seen we've been seeing this match for fucking ten years, dude. so high i'm so thirsty at the same time and it's it's good to to replenish the minerals in your body as you go along on a podcast it's really good and healthy for the podcast to take moments out and give dead air i don't mind it i hope it doesn't make you awkward damn 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 so we jump on over to fucking nxt this week fucking Pretty good show, dude. Pretty good show. We saw the show kick off with Angel Garza uh, taking on Joaquin Wilde in this breakout tournament match. This match went 7 minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, Angel Garza, Garza wins by uh, pinfall. Uh, I don't really like he, I mean, It's not that I like didn't like Joaquin Wilde. It's just I didn't like the fucking highlighters on his head. And Angel Garza, like, he could be a real asshole. So that's why I don't like him. But at the same time, like, it seems like he's... You know, he could ascend to that next level given given the time. You know, so I think Joaquin Wilde though needs to get fucking rid of the markers on his fucking head, dude. 
Uh, we saw an XT tag team title match. Uh, fucking Street Profits taking on the Forgotten Sons. This match only went two minutes and 25 seconds. Uh, ended up with a no, uh, DQ as I believe... Um, Oh, fuck, I don't even know. The dude that was in fucking Gunner, dude. Fucking Gunner. Uh, attacked attacked one of the Street Profits, causing the disqualification. This caused Oni Lorcan and, um, yeah, fucking Oni motherfucking Lorcan. I, I fucking can't even remember his fucking <laughs> tag team partner's fucking name. Uh, Lorcan and Birch, I'm sorry. Uh, Oni Lorcan and Dan- Danny Birch, uh, fucking, you know, come out. They're like, oh, you fucking owe us one, and, you know, forgot. So they give them back the titles and stuff, so. I, I like I like Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch, so you know I thought I thought this segment was good. It set up you know future opponent you know future matches uh, between you know uh, Lorcan and Birch and the Street Profits, and then obviously the Forgotten Sons still have you know their 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 names are still in the race for tag team champions, I suppose. Um, we saw Keith Lee take on Nico's Ricos. Um, we also did see Bourne and Aaliyah um, talking shit about Mia Yim last week about dude. So they're, I think they're setting up a match for next week, I want to say. Uh, yeah, okay, Aaliyah gets to face uh, Yim next week. So uh, you know, I, I have nothing bad to say about Bourne and Aaliyah. I think, again, this is all dev- developmental. So we've seen this bitch fuck character before. Um, so I got, you know, I got nothing bad to say about it. You know, again, you know, we'll see where it goes in terms of them long term. But um, it's good to see, you know, Mia Yim will get, you know, is, is starting to pick up steam in the women's division. Uh, Keith Lee took on Nico's Ricos. Nico's Ricos, that is fucking some of the stupidest fucking outfits I've ever seen in professional wrestling. That guy takes the fucking cake, dude. Uh, fucking Keith Lee, man. I don't know, dude. Keith Lee just makes me fucking smile every time he comes out on NXT TV, dude. He just makes me smile, dude. So seeing the the quick squash match that only went a minute five, uh, this, this to me was just, you know, proves that Keith Lee is a fucking star in the making and WWE better not fuck that up. Uh, they hype Adam, Adam Cole's championship celebration tour here, him going to, uh, London for the, for the download festival of over there in fucking the UK. Um, so, you know, yeah, I guess they're setting up Gargano and fucking Adam Cole because Gar- he was talking shit about Gargano. And so apparently that issue is not over. So I would assume that's our main event going into Toronto. We get the third and final match between Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole. And I'm, I'm not going to fucking shit all over, dude. I'll, you know, this is actually, you know, one time where like, okay, each match has been, you know, is, 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 has been good okay obviously the first match a little bit better than the second match but with that being said i think they're gonna bring it come toronto and it's gonna be one hell of a fucking match and we'll be like oh shit remember the trilogy of adam cole and johnny gargano remember the fucking trilogy so as i said earlier the main event of nxt tv this week was the steel cage match uh nxt championship women's championship title defense by of Shayna baszler versus io shirai uh, amazing fucking match, dude. Fucking Io Shirai hitting a fucking moonsault off the top of the cage. Uh, Candice LeRae getting involved and hitting a crossbody on Jessamyn Duke. Um, dude, I love the interference. I, I thought it, this was a, a far superior cage match compared to Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler this past Sunday, dude. They they really did a good job uh, selling. You know, I was like, fuck, I don't think Io Shirai is going to win because I know this shit was taped several weeks back. I didn't see any sort of like... You know, oh, spoiler this, title change had NXT television taping. Um, I didn't see any fucking spoilers or anything listed for that, but it was, dude, it was a really good match. They really sold it. Io Shirai is a fucking star. Shayna Baszler is a fucking star. Um, it was the end match uh, breakdown, though, of Io Shirai taking out Candice LeRae, turning on Candice LeRae, um, taking her out with a chair just beating the shit out of her and i loved every single moment of the heel turn dude i was like this is awesome dude so to me like my gold star goes for wwe tv this week goes to fucking io shirai dude like um instant fucking just like oh i love you io i fucking love the heel turn she's just like i don't need friends you know walking up and then she's just talking trash to japanese dude i loved it i loved every single moment of um of that whole segment dude that was to me, dude. That's how you do a steel cage, Kofi. That's how you do a steel cage, Dolph. Fucking A, dude. WWE, you've been put on notice, motherfuckers. So that was that was WWE television this week. Uh, we jump on over to the AEW Fighter Fest front. 
Um, I don't know how many of you are keeping up with being the elite and the and the road to Fighter Fest on Cody Rhodes' channel on YouTube. Um, I, you know, it's and again, it's not to say week to week that there's really anything like you know if there's anything notable to cover. I think this week with Kenny Omega was fucking amazing, dude. Kenny Omega um, doing his whole like from the Fighter Fest compound or whatever, like him on the iPad. Like I think Kenny Omega is like God, fucking dude. He, his comedic skills are on fucking point, dude. And the fact that they can swear and just drop the occasional F-bomb, you know, whenever whenever it's convenient uh, is is that much better, dude. So I thoroughly, um, I watch it every week, man. I know we should devote time to each one, but it's just like, you know, they kind of, I mean, they've been, you know, pushing Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. Uh, MJF is on there and dude, MJF is a star in the fucking makey, dude. Holy shit. Uh, his shit with, uh, you know, bringing in a fake, uh, hangman Adam Page earlier this week. That was funny as fuck, dude. And then fucking, <laughs> and then fucking hangman Page's fucking response to, uh, MJF, you know, basically saying, if you don't like fucking horses, fuck you. <laughs> like, you know, like, oh man, like I loved it, dude. I fucking love that shit. So, um, this coming Saturday though, let's just go ahead and run down the card really quick. So we got a hardcore match on the pre-show. Michael Nakazawa versus Alec uh, Jabaley, which Alex Jabaley apparently is the promoter of the CEO. Uh, yeah, the CEO Gaming Fest is what they're doing this show in conjunction uh, in conjunction with. Um, so this is all like Kenny Omega is doing apparently this this whole match or this whole show, I should say. Um, so yeah, that's good. That match apparently was supposed to take place last year, but apparently Alex Jabali uh, Jabali uh, was hurt and was not able to perform as he as he actually wanted to. So they're setting this match up this year. Um, so yeah, I've I mean is it, it, it yeah, we'll watch it we'll watch it and see how it goes. Uh, we have uh, on the main card or actually we have another pre show match. We have Kylie Ray a uh, smiley Kylie Ray versus Leva Leva Bates with Peter Avalon. Okay, so she's the librarian. And yeah, he, there's the librarians. Okay. So ah, man, I watch, I watch, you know, being the elite and shit and you see Peter Avalon with that. And he's with that fucking other dude, that Brandon guy or whatever. That's like friends with the, the young bucks. And I'm sorry, but like, I don't know. I just kind of get this like fucking whole, like, oh, I don't fucking like these guys. But then I think about it. It's like, man, you know, they're so fucking average. And it's like, Kevin Porter, you're fucking average as shit. It's like, this would be you if you were a professional wrestler. This is the level you would be at. And it's like, okay, well, I guess I don't hate him then because I'm just being jealous, you know, because it's like, oh, I wish I was a fucking professional wrestler. <laughs> so it's like, all right, I had to squash it. So, you know, I'm willing to give Peter, Peter Avalon a chance. And same with that Brandon dude. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to give both those dudes a chance on, on the AEW. Uh, but yeah, this is a singles match here. So it's good to see the women being featured. Um, so yeah, AEW, I, you know, they're going to be featuring women just as much as WWE, if not more. Nah, just as much, I should say. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, yeah, it'll be a match and, you know, we'll see how it goes, man. Uh, kicking off the main card, though, we got Cody versus Darby Allen. I saw Darby Allen at Defy here, um, like within the last two years. And Darby Allen, he's from Seattle. So, like, you know, hometown guy, hometown boy, home state boy, I should say. Um, I t- fucking you know jeff hardy fucking 2.0 man this guy's crazy as fuck dude you know you know you know what i'm saying so i am i you know i'm digging darby allen i'm digging the shit out of fucking darby allen so him facing cody i don't know i don't know if darby allen's gonna beat cody i don't think he's going to but i think it's gonna be it's gonna be a good fucking match dude because cody is a fucking turning into a damn good professional wrestler dude and i'm looking forward to this match and then we got um, Christopher Daniels taking on Sema. Um, they they built up this this match pretty decently. Christopher Daniels, obviously, it's Christopher Daniels and Sema. I'm I'm thoroughly you know enjoying getting to know who Sema is. Uh, we have uh, Yuka Saka. Oh, fuck. So we have the triple threat match, women's match here. Uh, Yuka Sasaki Sakazi. Versus Rio versus Nyla Rose, so um, I like I like all three of them. I thought Nyla Rose, um, you know, t- tickled me pink, guys, but I did not realize that she um, <laughs> was a was a was a transgender the first women's transgendered wrestler, like you know, like crazy, like I don't know, like I didn't realize that. I just thought she was like looked like China or something, you know. She was just a big beefy lady, uh, which she uh, apparently she is a big beefy lady. So dub, uh, yeah, cool, man. So. Uh, I think it's gonna be a good match, dude. I was, you know, I wouldn't say I was disappointed with their last match at Double or Nothing or whatever, um, but 
I, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be, it could, you know, possibly be match of the night, dude. I think, you know, I'm, I'm interested in seeing more of Nyla Rose and, uh, yeah, the, the Japanese ladies that had that shit, that fucking badass match at double or nothing. Like I'm totally, I'm totally stoked for that too as well, man. So it's like, you're just stoked for the whole entire show. It's just like fucking again, you know, what, what are you doing? Finger banging your girlfriend here over here to AEW and shit, dude. Like, Kinda, kinda. I'm just, I'm looking forward to it, dude. I mean, it's their second fucking show, dude. Who cares? Um, Adam Page versus Jimmy Havoc versus Jungle Boy versus MJF in a four-way match. Uh, good to see Jimmy Havoc, Jungle Boy, and MJF all getting featured on here. Same with Adam Page. Uh, sh- should be a damn good fucking match, man. Uh, John Moxley is making his AEW wrestling debut against Joey Janela. Holy shit, this is gonna be fucking pretty cool, dude. I... I think this actually may be the match I'm looking forward to the most is John Moxley taking on Joey Janela, dude. So, oh man, I can't wait to see what they have in store on Saturday. Uh, so then we are, we'll, we will see most likely in the main event, I assume, is the Elite, Kenny Omega, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks taking on the Lucha Brothers, Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix and Laredo Kid. So apparently Laredo Kid is a pretty fucking badass wrestler, dude. So... Uh, along with the Lucha Brothers and, you know, the Elite. Oh, damn, dude. This this may just be the show right here. Like, this and John Moxley and Joey Janela, and then Cody versus Darby Allen. Those are, like, my three matches that I'm, I am so looking forward to on Saturday. Damn, this is going to be a really good show, guys. And, again, this is taking place from where WCW had Bash at the Beach 96, and I believe... Also, 2000, and was it, yeah, 2000, with the whole infamous Hulk Hogan, uh, Vince Russo promo. I'm pretty sure it was in the same fucking arena. So that's where they're taking place uh, this coming Saturday in Daytona Beach, Florida, June 29th. All Elite Wrestling presents Fighter Fest. So we'll definitely have a post show that night. Uh, I don't know exactly when it's going to go up. Like I said, this weekend we have a uh, recording for the In the Mathematics podcast. So we will be recording that. And then I will be watching Fighter Fest afterwards. So it's going to be a fucking long night. So I don't know. We may end up recording in the morning. We may end up you know, recording at night. I don't know. It depends on how I feel and how much fucking coffee I drank that day. So um, all right, guys. So that is the the fucking totally necessary wrestling podcast this week, guys. If you're If you're with me till the end, thank you so much. I rambled a lot this week. It was hard to get through. I know, I know, I know. So um, if you haven't already, check out this week's episode of the podcast I know it listens to featuring Jaime Garcia. Jaime Garcia, uh, a stand-up comic here in Yakima, is a very very funny motherfucker, dude. And I love every time I'm able to, you know, have him on the show and I'm able to spend time and fucking, you know, talk talk shit with Jaime and shit so um all right guys so again I am Kevin Porter and this is the Totally Necessary Wrestling Podcast uh until next time peace
before I go crazy, before I lose everything. So I'm gonna deep inside of me, running the third Puerto Rican. It's girls to girls to the forest. I don't wanna be alone again. I wish I was on the highway 